170 meters above street level and spanning the Petronas Towers is the highest sky bridge in the world. Today, the sky bridge is the centerpiece of the national landmark and one of the main reasons why the Petronas Towers are unique. The idea for the sky bridge started as, a, as an aesthetic, artistic intention with a symbolic meaning. Connecting them with a bridge made them more clearly into a portal, a portal to the infinite, a portal to the sky. Besides serving a symbolic purpose, the sky bridge also has a functional role. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have 10 minutes on the bridge. It serves as a corridor connecting the two towers. To manage the flow of traffic, designers also made it a dual-level bridge. People can get from one building to the next at midway without having to travel down the length of the tallest towers in the world for the same purpose. Though the sky bridge brings with it form and functionality, incorporating it into the Petronas Towers did not come easy. Even at the design phase, the bridge proved to be a major challenge. The sky bridge design went through a number of stages of redesign. It, I think, went through five different stages of design. At the launch of the project, the sky bridge had a little bit of a spider web kind of a feel to it. The original design had a series of steel wires locking the bridge to the towers. This was based on the theory that they helped to create stability. But when structural engineers studied the design more closely, they discovered the theory was flawed. We were faced with a problem here on a technical point of view, uh, movement. We know it is a fact that both towers can move differently. Now when both towers move apart, we know that if you fix the bridge to the towers, there will be tearing forces. The original web-like design of the sky bridge had to be discarded. Designers and engineers then looked into other potential replacements before settling on a new plan. The solution was to float the bridge. It involved building an inverted V-shaped arch that supports the bridge in the center. Two end bearings accommodate any movements caused by the natural tendency of the towers to sway. In fact, the design is that at the center of this point, at each of these uh, bearings, the bridge is allowed to move three quarters of a meter in either direction of the center. That is what I meant by floating. It is not fixed. With the new design approved, engineers had Korean steel experts, Samsung Heavy Industries, prefabricate the sky bridge and ship it over to Malaysia. It was important to make sure that every single element of the sky bridge had to be perfect. A convoy of large trailer trucks transport over 400 bridge parts through Kuala Lumpur. But this is nothing when compared to the bigger challenge that awaits them on site. Raising the main parts of the sky bridge to more than 100 meters above ground and then assembling them in mid-air. Since it's going to be constructed in the mid-air, we can't afford to make any mistakes. If you have any slight mistakes, it's, it's, uh, you, have to, you, can't, you can't do anything with it, you know? So you, you have to make sure that it's, it's right. It's right the first time. On arrival, the bridge parts, weighing in at more than 400 tons, are carefully removed from the trucks. The sky bridge is reassembled into five sections, comprising the two 40 meter long legs, the two ends of the bridge, and its midsection. In no time, the lifting operation commences. The process begins with the lifting of the bridge's legs that each weigh 60 tons. Powerful hydraulic jacks help to ease a complex and dangerous operation. Each leg is slowly maneuvered into a vertical position over their permanent bearings at level 29 and secured. With 
this part of the process completed, lifting crews turn their attention to the bigger challenge of the operation. Lifting the 325 ton bridge midsection. This will not be an easy climb. The lifting operation begins. The midsection makes the ascent slowly at 12 meters an hour. Engineers carefully observe each second of the process. In an operation that will take more than 30 hours to execute, anything can happen. Sure enough, it does. A tropical storm suddenly erupts over Kuala Lumpur. But there was no way the engineers could stop the bridge midway through its ascent. So the lifting continues. As the lifting draws closer to the end, everyone thinks they got the better of Mother Nature. Until the lifting mechanism of the bridge section stops without warning. What happened was the computers that was used to lift up the sky bridge got struck by lightning and the whole process actually stops. And, uh, they had to actually repair it almost overnight. We can't leave the midsection dangling there, not knowing what's going to happen next. So I think everybody was actually praying. That was the most uh, the sleepless nights. I, I, I used to sleep most of the time, but that was one time that I didn't sleep at night. <laughs> to everyone's relief, the problem is quickly resolved, and the bridge continues its ascent to reach its intended height. After almost three days of painstaking lifting work, the bridge finally gets bolted into place with its legs resting firmly on both towers. The goal of building the highest sky bridge in the world has finally been realized.